When it comes to springtime, I love home decor projects and giftables. Hello friends, May Flom here with a bunny planter project featuring the Scan and Cut DX. All you're going to need for this is artificial flowers, a little pot, some vinyl, and of course, your Scan and Cut DX. So for this, I'm going to be using a built-in design as well as a printout. There you see, I've got a little clip art printout of a bunny that I got online. And I'm going to create a cut file for this because I really just want this little tiny bunny, like a little candy or chocolate looking bunny to be all over this pot so that it is springtime and Easter related, but not specifically so. So to get going, we've scanned and I only want the outline. You'll notice I picked only the outline because I want the inside of the bunny to be solid. I do not want the scan and cut to cut inside and outside the line. This is the selection that we make. From here, all we are going to do is save this, as you see me doing here, to the machine. It is this easy to take absolutely anything that you wish to turn into a cut file, save it, and use it. It's so fast and so easy, and you can see here that I've saved it to my machine and it's right there ready to use. From here is where we can do all kinds of stuff like for example, I'm going in here to object edit and I'm sizing it down because I know I only want it to be about an inch, inch and a quarter high because I have a very small little clay pot that I am working with. And I also know that I want a bunch of them. So now that I've sized it down, I'm gonna make eight of them and then just kind of organize them on to two different sides because my vision is we'll use two different colors of vinyl, just regular craft vinyl, think of it like a sticker sheet to cut these out and create these for our planter decoration. And once I've got this done, I am actually going to click OK and then I'm going to click Add because I would like to add to this one of the border patterns. Now there's lots of different border patterns. I want the cute little Rick Rack one and I'm looking here at the height. Now I need this to be very small. I need it to be about a half an inch high However, that's going to mean to keep the proportions, it's also going to be very short, which would be a problem, except this is a repeating pattern, which means what I can do here is link them together by unifying them, which I am absolutely 100% going to show you how to do. So what we are going to do is pull these down to the bottom of the screen. And we're going to want to line them up straight on a line with a very, very slight overlap. The reason we want to do this is I'm trying to create one cut. I'm trying to overlap them slightly so that I can then weld them together and create one long piece of rickrack that's also very, very short. And to do this, if you line them all up against the line, a, lot, a line, I should say, whether that is the very bottom edge or you center it, however it works for you, and I only need three of them to do this. It works really well. It also works really well to utilize. You see how I'm utilizing this arrow tool. This is an option that lets you really precisely move things a single nudge to the left, right, up, down. Really helps precision. Although I'll be very honest for this, you don't need to be 100% precise on your placement here. It's going to turn out and look great no matter what. But then we're going to want to weld this together, which means we need just those items. Now you might notice everything is selected. That won't work. We need to only select the three items at the bottom that we are trying to weld together. That part's very important. Once you have those three, you're gonna click through to edit item and weld. Welding them together will make them one long piece. Now you might notice this, how it went to a 12 by 20 format screen. Um, I think when I welded it, it just nudged it down and, and just made that happen. All you need to do is nudge it back up to make that go away. All right, onward. Once we have our stuff, we got everything ready to go, it's time to put our pieces of vinyl onto our mat. And you can see I have three different colors here and I have them all pressed down. We're gonna make sure that they're all nicely placed. Then we're going to open up our scan and cut, place our mat into position and load it, you see it loading there. And then smooth that, make sure everything is nice and smooth and we're ready to cut. Now before I go and cut, I am going to, oh, and I can see here. So when I went to do this, I didn't push the correct button and that came back down. All you have to do is move it back up. Do you see how I moved, when I moved it up, 
then it stopped showing that I was on a 12 by 24 or needed a 12 by 24 mat and went back to where it should be. That's a really nice feature when you're going bigger, but you just want to be aware of it if you're having a problem or you're wondering what happened if you tried to expand too low. Now what am I doing? Well, I've scanned my mat by pushing that middle button you saw me push. And this will show me where my pieces of material are, if they're good, and if I need to make any adjustments. So I'm moving my little bunnies around a little bit. I'm also going to add a few. We can still do everything. Once this is scanned, it's not the end game. We can still move things, manipulate things, edit things, whatever we need to do. I'm gonna go into object edit and make a few more bunnies because I feel like we have enough space and we might as well, who knows, we might need a few more. Can't hurt to have a few extras. We can always use these on cards and tags and other projects. And once I am satisfied with everything, once I feel like everything is in place, I'm happy, let's cut. We're going to go through to select cut and we are going to make sure we are on half cut because we want the vinyl to cut, but not the backing material. And with all of this done, it's time to start, it's time to cut and it's time to weed. In other words, remove, remove our vinyl from the mat, of course. And then we are also going to take the vinyl sheets and we are going to, you'll notice I use my little pick tool there, my little craft pick tool to help me start if the vinyl is sticking or if a piece is kind of like wanting to stick to the background that we're trying to get rid of. I use that tool for that purpose and it's very, very helpful. It also helps ensure I don't accidentally tear any vinyl because we definitely don't want that. So we're going to repeat this process on all three colors of vinyl that we have and it's already looking super cute and eastery. You might notice I just trimmed off a little extra on the pink. That's just to save it for later use because I noticed there was a good amount that we didn't need to have there. Before I show you assembling, I better show you how we prepare. So you need to, or you don't need to, but I chose to paint my container. This is just a little clay pot that I picked up at the craft store and I'm just painting it all over with a white acrylic paint. A gesso would work as well. You don't need to paint the inside. I just kind of smeared any paint that was in the inside around. And you're just going to paint all around and then let it dry. Now, you can put multiple coats. I decided I wanted mine. I wanted some of the pot color to show through. I wanted it to look a little aged, a little distressed. So I did not do multiple coats, but you certainly can allow it to dry and do another coat. Another option is to take a paper towel and rub it all over and then remove, and it'll leave you with cool texture. And then of course you would want to then allow it to completely dry before you start working, before you start assembling this project. That is important. You'll want everything to be completely dry. But once it is, go ahead and gather all of your materials. That would be your vinyl and your pot. Now, optional, because these particular designs are very sturdy and very small, they can be done by hand, just like you would apply a regular sticker. Or, you can use transfer material, which is available for purchase from Brother Dealers, to pick up and lift off your pieces. To do that, as you see me doing there, you just firmly rub the vinyl shape so that it lifts off onto the transfer material and then, as the name implies, carries over to your project where it is placed and the transfer material pulls away. So you're going to repeat this process with or without the transfer material. That's kind of up to you. Again, some of these smaller projects, you just you don't have to use it, it's optional. And it's just because the small sturdy shapes, they're not gonna be a problem. So a lot of the larger shapes or more intricate shapes, you really do need this transfer material. It's very vital to the process. And I'm just going to cover, go all the way around my pot there with my little happy little bunnies and move them on over. Here I'm just showing you, see, you can just lift the bunny off as well and place it. You just want to use a nice firm all over pressure and make sure everything is transferring beautifully. Then we'll move on to our Rick Rack Topper. So I'm pulling off that very long strip and this, I actually think it went better doing it the way I did it. You might notice I have it folded over my hand so the sticky side is up so that the sticky side is not touching my hand there. It's face up and then I'm just applying and keeping it nice and smooth as I go around this round topper. Now I already know there's going to be a gap. I already know that this 11 inch long piece is not quite long enough. That's why I cut that fourth piece 
because now what I can do is all I have to do is because everything is sized the same is find the line. So all I have to do is line it up where it goes and then it will beautifully and seamlessly line from the one side to the other. Now, if for any reason it does not line up perfectly or you have one kind of funky little bit or something like that, you can just trim some off or use a craft knife to like, I have a one little tiny point there. So I'm just gonna use my craft knife and just trim off that little point at the end that I don't want there anymore. It is important to remember, even after you've cut, you absolutely can do some editing, do some cutting and trimming. Once this is done, you could be done, it's up to you. I am going to go around and make sure that everything is really firmly pressed down and that I am actually also going to add some glitter. To do this, I'm just taking some liquid adhesive that's clear drying and a foam paintbrush there. And I'm putting this all over the entire surface. You can work in parts or you can do it all at once. That's up to you. And then I'm taking a very fine glitter and I'm going to put some onto, you can see I'm kind of working on a paper mat there. It's actually a chipboard mat. I'm gonna pour some onto the mat to sprinkle on. And I'm gonna use a very light hand, a very light sprinkling, like I'm sprinkling salt, really. And what this is going to do is a little bit of that fine glitter is going to catch here and there on that adhesive and it'll stay. But what it'll do is it'll add a bit of sparkle to my project without being overwhelmingly glittery. Then I'm going to repeat by tapping some more clear drying liquid adhesive all along the top and then taking a chunkier glitter and sprinkling that very carefully along the top to make kind of a, a little bit of a layer of a little bit of a bigger, a little bit more obvious glitter. Now, what else could we do? We could add buttons, we could add ribbons, we could add sequins, you could add whatever else you would like. But I hope I have inspired you to get your scan and cut out and be thinking spring, be thinking decor, and really enjoy the wide variety of projects that can be created with the scan and cut and a little creativity. I certainly love how this has turned out and I cannot wait to gift it to my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderfully crafty day and be sure to subscribe to the Brother YouTube channel for more projects, ideas, and inspiration.